Hi guys, back so soon. I am here with a review of A Prayer for Owen Meany by John Irving, and I may stumble through this because there is so much to this book. I was really, really amazed by what John Irving was able to accomplish in this book. So there's my cover to the digital ebook. Gotta love it. That track plays a very important role in the book. So yeah. So from the beginning, Owen Meany is a diminutive kid. He and his friend Johnny Wheelwright. Uh, Johnny is the son, well, take it back. Johnny's the grandson to a very rich woman, one of the richest women in town. And so they live in Gravesend, Connecticut. And yeah, his grandmother's kind of the grand poobah of town. So yeah, his mother is kind of a free spirit uh, in comparison to his grandmother. And Johnny comes from unusual beginnings. His mother won't tell him who his father is, and that plays a big role in the book. So, yeah, Johnny has a best friend, Owen Meany, who's very tiny. He's tiny, tiny. He never gets taller than five feet, and Johnny says later in the book when they're older that that's probably a stretch. Um, Owen's most defining characteristic is a very high, screechy, broken voice is how it's described in the book. And so his parts in the, the story are all in caps, and that was something that as a younger person drove me crazy to try try to read it because I felt like he was screaming at me all the time but that's exactly how the characters describe him he always sounds like he's kind of screechily screaming at everybody um so when they are 11 years old they play little league baseball together and Owen gets up to bat he hits sort of pop fly and it strikes Johnny's mother in the temple and kills her immediately. Now, you might think that that would be the end of the friendship, but that is like the very beginning of the book. So, obviously it does not taint their friendship. They work through it, but it gives Owen the idea that he is an instrument of God, and that is something that plays out through the entire book. There is a lot of grappling with religion and spirituality and faith in this book. Johnny grapples with his faith. He says on the very first page of the book, the very opening line of the book, that Owen Meany made him believe in God. And that journey plays out through the whole, whole novel, which is really, really interesting to me. Um, if you are not a person that has any interest whatsoever in faith or spirituality or religion, even if you're just objectively interested, if you're not even objectively interested, I guess I should say, then you probably won't like this book. It probably won't be of interest to you. But that is something that's very interesting to me. And so that carried me through the whole novel. The whole novel is about Owen and Johnny growing up. We follow them from those Little League games up through prep school at Gravesend Academy where they both attend. And I would say that Owen really gains a sense of confidence and a commanding presence about him from the beginning of the book when he discovers or decides that he is an instrument of God. And there are some other things that take place that transpire in the novel that really drive that point home for him. And so a lot of the struggle in the novel, especially in the conclusion, and I won't tell you much about it because I certainly would not want to spoil the book, um, all of the characters have to decide if they think Owen is an instrument of God. Owen was very sure of himself. Owen was totally convinced of that fact. And so the other characters have to decide what they think about Owen and the things that happened to him and the, the twists of fate or predestination that uh, transpire for all of the characters and for Owen in particular. So, yeah, some really, really big themes, grappling with some really big questions in this book. And it was just masterfully plotted. There were times that I would think, why do we have to revisit this again? Why is this important? But the way that all of those little pieces come together at the end of the book, everything clicks into place, and it was just beautiful. It was just beautiful. All of a sudden, you said, oh, that is why I needed to know that. That is why Irving wanted me to know that. Irving is one of those characters, characters, one of those authors that builds his characters so well, builds their surroundings so well, their hobbies, their, their fates so well, that everything just seems to come together and you know that you're in really good hands, that he knows everything that's going on and everything is as it should be. So I had that feeling when I read The Cider House Rules many years ago, 
I had that same feeling, maybe even more so, with A Prayer for Owen Meany. So Irving is definitely an author that I want to explore more. I love his big questions, and I love the un unorthodox characters and their unorthodox lives. And so, yeah, this book absolutely made me do the ugly cry. It broke my heart, but it made me so happy because it just seemed like everything was perfect. It was a perfect book. And I don't say that very often. Um, but yeah, definitely five out of five stars for A Prayer for Owen Meany. So if you haven't read Irving, I would definitely suggest that you either start with this book if you're a little bit brave and don't mind the all caps. <laughs> and if you have some interest in religion and spirituality and faith. Um, if not, then I would recommend The Cider House Rules by John Irving, which is one of my probably top three all-time favorite books and one that I really want to reread after having read this book. So I hope you all are having a great day. I hope your day is filled with fantastic books, and I hope you find a new favorite soon. Bye.